There's an interesting debate going on at the moment um, in the corporate world, which is, do people work more effectively from home or not? <laughs> I can tell you in Shanghai, they definitely don't. But you know, this was really kicked off when Marissa Mayer last year, um, you know, the new head of Yahoo, sent an email to everyone and said, listen, all of you working from home, come back to work. And the reason why she said that was, strangely enough, she said that in this time of change, it's actually important that we start by being physically together. Now, it's easy to imagine this was an outlier, except that a month later, Meg Whitman did exactly the same thing, the CEO of HP. She actually said, to be a more connected workforce, we have to start by actually being in the office. So is this an end to remote work? I don't think so. But I think what's starting to happen is that companies and leaders are realizing that we have a problem in the way we work. We're losing connectivity. You know, the reason why building connections is so important at physical events is because they go to the heart of what I believe is gonna be the hallmark of 21st century success. Building connections is more than just networking. It's about creating what I call network capital. So Cemex, the, um, the cement manufacturer, actually models the social graph of its company to work out who are the most innovative people and how do they connect and do their work. This is what I mean about building a lightweight company. It's not about the assets or the things that the company owns. It's about the connections that connect the best people that define success in the 21st century. It's not just Cemex. At Google, when you go for your performance review, the people that review you is based on Google's analysis of your email behavior. So the people you most connect with are the people that review your performance. So it's an active social graph. Facebook, similarly, runs an internal version of Facebook just for Facebook employees. Someone in HR told me it was the number one reason that people come back to work at Facebook. They miss their friends. When you leave the company, you get disconnected from the corporate Facebook. So connectivity is at the very heart of the modern day company. We love designing products. You know, we even love designing brands. I mean, take a close look at these and try and imagine how much we actually spend designing them. It's quite a shock, actually. I mean, you've got to love Twitter. I mean, the power of clip art. But seriously, we spend a lot of money on these things, products, brands. But how often do we actually design companies? It's amazing. We have 21st century ideas about business. But even to this day, we shoehorn them into structures that came from the 19th century. If you think about it, you know, so much of management, of the way we organize ourselves and work, came from the Industrial Revolution. It was all about control and treating people in a factory to get the most out of them. So we invented departments like human resources, sales and marketing, IT. That was phase one. Not so long ago, we moved into phase two, where we figured out that we could take those departments and we could move them elsewhere. So we could offshore entire business processes to places like India or the Philippines. Someone once described this to me as, your mess for less. This really was an innovation. It was just shuffling the deck chairs on the Titanic. It's only been in the last 18 months or so that something very new has happened in the world of business, which is those departments have not just been offshored, they're moving onto platforms. So they're moving onto people who, like companies like Salesforce, that just specialize in sales and marketing. They're not just doing a single instance or a customized IT built, they're doing it for thousands of industries, which means they can get levels of innovation that IT vendors never were able to in the past. There's a new land grab across almost every department of the enterprise, from finance and legal, HR, sales and marketing, IT. What's really interesting, and this is tough for a lot of IT vendors, is that the actual companies and platforms are integrating among themselves now. So they're actually joining in the cloud. Now, there's a few consequences of this. The first thing is, is that IT departments have to change. They're upgrading their DNA. You're seeing people who have come from the world of business administration, not from you know, network administration, moving into leadership um, areas. The role of jobs in the enterprise is going to change. You know what? Accountants may even get less boring. You know? Because in the past, you might have had a team of people in accounts receivable making calls, chasing up um, bills and invoices. That's all going to go to software. The people left in, H in, um, in finance will be business strategists. I mean, 
how many of us have been told that we would be meeting less physically and traveling less because of these new virtual technologies? You've all heard that, right? What's happening? We're meeting more than ever. We're on planes more than ever. What happened? And I think it actually has got to do with an old theory from economics from the 19th century. It's called Jarvin's Paradox. And what this idea was was simple. So around uh, the 19th century, we suddenly got better at the way we made steam engines. They, they got a lot more efficient. So everyone predicted we'd be using less coal. Actually, we started using more coal than ever. In fact, the use of coal and steam engines moved into all these other industries that never existed before and ended up powering the Industrial Revolution. So Jarvin's paradox says sometimes the technology, which is actually designed to decrease the use of something, increases it. The same thing, I believe, is happening in communications. You are now more connected than ever before. You know more people on LinkedIn and Facebook than you would have five years ago. You can keep in touch with them now more because of Skype and mobile phones. So what that's done is actually increased both the need and the desire to physically connect. So networking is actually embedded in your DNA. And more than that, it's going to be embedded into the DNA of the 21st century company.